Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video we're taking a look at Project Blue. Project Blue is a mod of Windows 10 that really makes Windows 10 look and feel like Windows 8.1. I'm really excited to take a look at this as we've seen a ton of custom builds that make Windows 10 and even Windows 11 look like older builds of Windows, but I've never seen one, I don't believe, that makes it look like Windows 8.1. Um, I know we've taken a look at Revert 8 Plus in the past. Um, and we've taken a look at quite a few different ones, but I don't believe, and I could very well be wrong, we've taken a look at so many ISOs that we haven't looked at one that looks like Windows 8.1. So I'm eager to see what this looks like, and once we get into the OS, we'll take a look at it and see what we can find. So booting straight into the ISO, we can see that it automatically identifies itself here as Windows 8, copyright 2013. So I wonder if it actually is using the Windows 8 installer, because you, all you have to do is change the install.wim um, if you use the same boot.wim from Windows 8, you should be able to install Windows 10, but that's, you know, irrelevant for us to even think about right now. That's just me thinking out loud. Um, it does identify itself as Windows 8.1 Pro. So from the installer, you wouldn't really be able to tell that this is Windows 10. I mean, so far, everything's literally identified as Windows 8.1 Pro um, or Windows 8. So let's go ahead and install. Nothing out of the ordinary for a typical Windows 10 or 8.1 installation. We're going to go ahead and let this install, and once we're back, I'll get VMware Tools installed so we can take a look around the OS. All right, and here we are booted into the operating system. The only thing I did off camera was I installed VMware Tools so we can get a better experience, but here we are. So right here by default on the desktop, there is a Welcome to Project Blue WordPad document. Um, we can take a look in here. It is a Windows 10 installation ac or completely modified to make it look and feel like Windows 8.1 accurately. Here's a list of everything they used here in the mod. Like I'm impressed. Like that's a lot of actual modifications they made. And then here's Windhawk mods. Here's some known issues. I'm not going to read through all of these, um, but known issues. So if we mention anything, they're here. And then big credit to I've never been able to pronounce his name right. I'm not even going to try to. Um, but huge credit to this guy right here for making this mod possible. We've taken a look at quite a few of his mods before, and they're actually pretty good mods. Um, the only thing it would be better is if some of the newer mods, like Windows 10 to 7 U4, was not just a torrent download, because I'm not downloading from a torrent. Alright, and so let's begin looking at the operating system. We can see that the wallpaper is the standard Windows 8.1 wallpaper, and it even has the text down here that identifies as Windows 8.1 Pro Build 9600. Down here we have our Show Desktop button, we have our Calendar, it's pretty standard Windows 8. We have our network pane, which I forgot how much that I forgot that it opens on that side, um, which then prompted me to think, do we have charms bar? And of course, we do have the charms bar. Um, it is a little laggy, I will say. Like if I bring it up, you can see that not everything slides over at the same time. It's not as I don't want to say nice, but not as smooth as Windows 8.1, the real version is. But we do see here that when I bring it back up, we have our settings pane that just opens the settings app. It looks like. Um, devices, nothing, okay, yeah, there's the connect. Um, what else we have? Search, which does open Windows Search at the top there, standard Windows 10 search. All right, let's quit playing around with the charms bar and get on with the video here. We have our volume mixer with Windows 8 sounds built in. Um, and then in the taskbar tray, we have live tiles anywhere. That's the only non-Windows app that we have installed here, obviously aside from VMware tools. Tracing the taskbar all the way over to this side, we by default have the Windows Store, which I don't know why auto hotkey opened, <laughs> but we're going to close that, and it looks like the Windows, okay, so when I open the store, auto hotkey opens. Interesting, to say the least, but okay. We then have our File Explorer, that when we open it, it does take a while to open, but it does actually eventually open, um, nonetheless, pretty cool. We then have Internet Explorer, which as we saw, it opened, yep, it's a modified version of Firefox to make it look like Internet Explorer. And we can even see that the default is Google, old logo, um, about Internet Explorer even shows IE 11. So it's actually Firefox, but it's themed to look like Internet Explorer, so you can actually use it and explore the web uh, in 2025. Down here in the start screen, I had a feeling that they would do something like this. Um, it is similar to the start screen that we see in Windows 8, but unfortunately because of limitations with the way that Microsoft does things, this is simply the tablet mode version of the start menu in Windows 10. Um, I believe they got rid of that in Windows 11, but in Windows 10 this is simply the tablet mode start screen, which doesn't look that much different from what we saw in Windows 8. So here we have our mail application, which this is actually in fact, oh it's just Windows 10 mail. I thought it was going to be Windows 8 mail, but 
it does go full screen, um, which is something that I don't think the Windows 11 one does. Sports, I know this is a classic from the time, yep, couldn't load, probably because the servers are down at this point. Um, we have Xbox Video, again, probably servers are down. The Xbox app, which does open, yep, and it, yeah, this is really the one from Windows 8. I mean, this is bringing back lots of memories. I mean, needless to say, it probably doesn't work because the servers are down, obviously. Uh, food and drink, again, another one that the servers are most likely, yep, down. Um, a lot of the Windows 8 apps, even on Windows 10, don't work anymore because servers are down, obviously. Um, and then we have our standard stuff here. And in Windows 8.1, you would be able to click an arrow down here and it would scroll up, it would show you all your apps. Obviously in tablet mode, this is that version. Um, it's just, again, a restriction of Windows 10 um, for some reason. But we can see all the different mods that are included in here. I mean, there's Windhawk, we've seen that, Live Tiles Anywhere, Embedded Lockdown Manager, um, all sorts of stuff in here to make this truly possible. Ultra UX Theme Patcher. Um, I know obviously a lot of effort went into this. I think this is the most mods we've ever seen in a Windows install, hence why it's 6.5 gigabytes. Um, and then of course we also have Windows Backup. I know Microsoft always finds a way to sneak that in um, one of their newer applications. Um, yeah, but if you want to take a look here at what's installed, I mean, I have a lot of... <laughs> this, this brings back so many memories because my first personal computer, like not one that I shared, was Windows 8.1. Um, and I remember I would spend all day exploring the operating system and trying to learn things. And um, I remember being in this a lot just to play around with it because it was interesting uh, to me at the time. So moving away from that, because it's just an alarm clock app. I mean, you know, the full screen calculator, obviously, that just opens as a, there you go. Now it's full screen. Perfect. Just the way Windows 8 implied. You know, a lot of these apps that I have a history with, um, you know, it brings back a lot of memories uh, from Windows 8 at the time. So very happy that we got a chance to take a look at this. And obviously tablet mode, we have our sign out, our documents, pictures, settings, and power. Speaking of settings, let's go ahead into our settings application. And we can see that this is just a standard Windows 10 settings. Um, we go into system about, we can see that we are running, let's see, Windows 8.1 Pro version 2009. Um, installed on 8-9-2024, so this was compiled in August of 2024, so it's relatively not new, but it's within the last year, and build 19.045.4651, so the build 2009, I don't actually believe, unless I'm wrong, I could be wrong, I don't believe this is the September 2020 update, I believe this is the 22H2 um, update for Windows 10. Um, that's what it was supposed to be. So I'm a little confused on where they're getting 2009 unless I'm missing something really obvious. Let's take a look at our disk usage. So we're using 22.7 gigs out of a 59.8 gig disk. We have 37 gigs free for whatever we need. Pretty cool nonetheless. I mean, nothing really not standard for a Windows install. I mean, they take up a lot of space. And in Task Manager, we can see, yep, even like Windows 8.1, any apps that you open, like the, the full screen Windows 8.1 apps, they all get stuck in the background. I remember this very vividly getting so frustrated why my computer was running so slow. And then it's because these apps were just idling in the background because when you close them, you don't really close them. Anyways, why is our CPU at 100%? Because the charms bar port is using a lot of CPU. Regardless, let's take a look at our CPU. Um, maybe this is a little bit of an unfair comparison because I don't know why my CPU is peaking. Um, but we have 100% disk usage right now. Um, Anti-malware is doing something, I think. Uh, we're using 3.4 out of 4 gigs of RAM and, you know, traditional SSD usage. So, not great on the specs, but again, it's I don't know what this is doing right now. Um, Anti-malware is scanning something it doesn't like. I have no idea why, but it's doing something. And the charms bar is using a lot. Maybe they're fighting each other right now. Maybe that's what's going on. But regardless, I'm going to close out of that and pretend I didn't see that. So that being said, this is just a brief overview of Project Blue. It's definitely something interesting that I recommend everybody take a look at because it's cool. I mean, to go back to Windows 8 was my favorite operating system. Windows 8.1, not Windows 8. Um, I really did like Windows 8.1, and I would go back to use it even with the start screen today if I had the choice over Windows 11. Um, so that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.